Me and my ex have been meeting up on and off for the last year and a half since we broke up. Is this unhealthy? Obviously. Is it un- well, I mean, are you happy? Is she happy? Are you hanging out, having fun, and hooking up? Are your needs being met? No, it's toxic as fuck. I think the two of you should probably... If you've been doing it for a year and a half, and you've been doing it off and on for a year and a half after you broke up, then it's like, are you together or are you not together? Are you just doing, like, how, are you you're just kind of, like, comfortable. fulfilling each other's needs and then going about your separate ways? Or are you just fulfilling each other's needs and then you kind of still have that romantic kind of, like, little tiny, like, little stitch there and it's like you're not seeing other people but you're seeing each other. So it's kind of like yeah. you're together but you're not together but you're not putting a label on it. Friends with benefits, it's a lot easier to go back to what you know than to take the risk that, hey, maybe a couple of years before you find anybody else that you click with like that. And that's why most people, they major minor things. They're, they would rather settle for something like that than roll the dice and go find somebody that they really want. So it's it just depends on are you happy to be there? Is she happy to be there? Or are you just settling because you're too scared to become single again and go meet somebody you really want because it takes time and you never know when it's going to happen it can happen in a few weeks it might take a few years until you meet somebody you really click with and that's that's the downside of dating and then becoming single again you typically the next great love of your life doesn't just you know pop into your life as soon as you break up there's usually a period of time well maybe they still you know um i don't know not like a commitment issue maybe it's just it's less stressful for they're just not that into each other, and they're not miserable enough or unhappy enough to do anything about it. It's like people that work a job they hate. It's like, eh, it pays the bills, and they don't do anything about it. But yet they complain to everybody about it. Well, um, some, some women are okay with just um, dating their significant other. They don't, It's like if you, you don't have to see someone else. It's just like you can you know see each other a couple times a week uh, go to dinner sleep together they're not sleeping with someone else but they're you're like just kind of like dating cuz when it c- gets too too much some some people are just like that though they don't want the labels of things you I know I don't know about that i think that um it can go either that way or a different way because in my past um how do i say this kindly I was dating someone off and on for like four years and there was either times where we wanted to commit to each other or there were times where like he was having stresses with work um, and that was being taken out on the person closest to him, which Mm -hmm. was me. Um, and then there was like infidelity and then there was, obviously I wasn't going to, wasn't going to sit by that. Who was the unfaithful one? He was. Obviously. Obviously. Corey. I'm Duh. not, I'm not a cheater, Corey. Um. Just yes. And the question, Erica. And then there were other times where. We were just, like, on different pages in life, and he wanted me to do certain things so that we could progress and move towards, like, engagement, and I don't know if I was, like, holding back because I was unsure if he was the person because I didn't trust him for all of the other things that he's done in the past but then he kept going back to his old ways but there was always something like something there where it was just like going to be like a hurdle and I think that there are situations like where women and men like can't get on that same page because they just they don't know where where one one another are like on that page so i mean if i was a vet man i'd say that dude's just not that into it neither is her but I, I disagree. It's easier to do that than, you know, let's... I, dis- I disagree because I think that, like, both both partners definitely 
can be head over heels in love with one another. Um, they can be going through so many different things, especially like, you know, we're young, we're in our thirties. Um, life is happening and you, you can't control it. Chunky. Sorry. I was um, uh, you know, we're young. You didn't have the camera on her? No, I switched it by accident. I switched it on you, and I switched it back. We're young. Um, we're I, thought, in our, I was looking at the preview window. We're young. Stop. We're young. We're in our 30s. Um, life is happening, and, I mean, we're in our 30s. It's, it, it's a whole nother... It's, it's a generation where we're, we're struggling, Um I think that Jade and Chunky can agree that our generation is dealing with a lot of stresses that Corey's generation didn't have to deal with. Um, totally oppressed. This is all three different generations, though. So. Well, I, I still kind of put Chunky in our generation because he's also going to have to deal with the, the sacrifice. Oh, yeah, true. We're... We're, His is gonna be even worse. Yeah, he's fucked. Um, he's, well, fuck. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying Their to paint you a realistic. <laughs> I'm trying to paint you a realistic picture. I mean, we're, we're in a, we're in a place where it's so hard for us in so many different levels that you guys need to like wake up and look at it and be like, holy shit! If they are dealing with this, like. How can we learn from them to better our ourselves? Because I tell I tell my brother this every single day. I'm like, learn from my mistake. Like you're so much smarter than me as a as a being, and don't don't even bother going near the hot stove. Like I am the hot stove, so like you can what? you can learn from that. You okay. get it. Yeah. You get it. So it's like. How can how can you just like really absorb like what happens to certain people um, and like certain relationships because we're going through so many ups and downs and we're still trying to create some sort of stability where yes we want a family yes we want marriage yes we want like the end goal of a happy life but we're dealing with all of everything that life is throwing at our generation, which is Adulting everything is that everything that all the previous generations have literally fucked up for us. How dare you? It's the truth. Was that Eric, Eric has been listening to Greta. <laughs> I don't listen to Greta. I'm how dare you? I'm just speaking on my previous experiences because with my past serious relationship, that's exactly what happened. Um, we tried so hard to just get on the same page, and every single time it was like he was on one level and I was on a different level, and then he begged me to like do all these other things to try and tried to like uplift me and bring me to this super high level. And I'm like, I'm not that kind of person. This is the type of person I am. And he's like, but I want my wife to be this. And like, God forbid I drop dead. And like, we have kids, like, how am I supposed to know that my kids and you are going to be okay? Like, yes, we're going to be financially like this and that and that. Like life insurance policy could be handy. 